All right, hello. Um, th this is the uh, video pertaining to section test three, um, uh, your final section test for Phil 101, uh, winter 2017. I suppose I have to say all that sort of stuff because it's video and it, some people find these things. Anyhow, it doesn't matter. Anyhow, it's due uh, Monday, April 24th at 11.55 p.m. That's five minutes to midnight. And I'm going to take this chance to remind you that um, most of what's left for the course, this section test, your final writing assignment, and all of the discussion forums are all due at exactly the same day and time, um, April 24th, 11.55 p.m. So um, it, it's, if you've got a lot to do uh, with regard to that, you've got uh, actually quite a lot of work ahead of you um, if you've left it to the last minute. Um, so uh, the only thing that's due before this um, is the last day of class. Um, the forum for your uh, writing project proposal closes at 10 p.m. on the 18th, um, which is Tuesday. So um, be sure to get that done because that's 5%, right? So this is a bottom heavy course. This is 60% of the course that's coming in right at the end. Um, it, but it's you've give, had the ability to work ahead. The writing assignment, the proposal forum I posted just before reading week, um, and the forums have been posting all the way along, right? So it's not as though I'm requiring something new right at the end, right? But you do have two things that are sort of newish um, that come in right at the end. Um, so. By now, you know these tests, you know the boilerplate, you know the basically they're divided into three sections and you've got uh, these tests which are five questions, four points each for a total of 20 points. Um, uh, the missed assignment policy, you've got extensions require a conversation, so uh, don't assume that you've got an extension. You've got to talk to me about this. Um, uh, so, uh, and uh, with regard to this final test, I'm under the gun. I have to get your grades into the office, the registrar, very quickly after you submit. Um, so, uh, I'm going to have to be very stingy with regard to extensions on this final writing assignment here, um, just because of time constraints and post by the structure that we're engaging with, right? So, um, anyhow, uh, still, if life happens, let me know, right? We'll try and work something out. Uh, assignment submission, if I don't have it, I don't have it. Um, make sure it submits, make sure it submits properly, make sure that the proper thing has submitted, and plagiarism, um, don't do it. Um, if I find you've done it, you fail. Um, and contractually, I'm obligated to pass this on to the Dean of Students Office for academic review. And so uh, it can be very serious. And um, it's I know this is the end of the course. And if you're freaking out about your grade, the best way to actually raise your grade is to do the work. Right. So uh, speaking of which, um, there are these readings, the essential character core, the, the, the concept of anxiety, and Nietzsche, the portable Nietzsche, Twilight of the Idols, right? So those are your two books. Uh, and then you've got a pile of video material. Um, I assume that you've screened this video material uh, when I assess your responses. Um, I also assume that you've done the readings. Um, and if you don't, you're probably going to be sort of lost, right? So it's it's important that you engage with the content of the course. Um, so anyhow, five questions, uh, four points each. Uh, I did two on Kierkegaard, three on Nietzsche. Um, the first one should be um, fairly straightforward. Uh, this is the main idea of um, the, the, the text that we were reading. Kierkegaard introduces anxiety as the dizziness of freedom and as something that arises as a result of the human being being qualified as spirit. Uh, what does he mean by this? All right, so you've got two notions um, to unpack. I would probably start with the second one. Uh, what does Kierkegaard mean by spirit? All right, so um, we've talked about that sort of extensively. Um, and then move on to anxiety, a treatment of anxiety is the dizziness of um, freedom. All right. Um, the Philosophize This kind of uh, podcasts were probably fairly useful with regard to this. Um, so it's those are good resources for you, and they're both fairly short, right? So um, make good use of them. 
Um, the, the second question with regard to uh, Kierkegaard, um, it, he concludes uh, our selection of the concept of anxiety because it's a bridge. We don't have the full text, right? Um, anytime you see a break, that's uh, the editor has edited some big chunk of that text out, right? So um, let me see over here. Kierkegaard, fear and trembling. Do, 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 no, I don't have it handy right here, but nonetheless, the concept of anxiety is sort of a weighty text, right? So, um, anyhow, um, Kierkegaard concludes our section of the concept of anxiety by suggesting that a qualitative leap is necessary to overcome anxiety. What is meant by qualitative leap, and in what sense uh, can uh, it overcome anxiety? Right, because he's rather speci specific about this at the end of the concept of anxiety. Um, as an old professor of mine used to say, it's a leap that's always a leaping, right? It, it, because anxiety is built in, it's structural, right? The qualitative leap has to, in each instance, overcome anxiety. So it's sustained by this qualitative leap, which is a leap of faith, right? So, um, that's very similar to um, your discussion forum uh, question, so you should have lots of resources to engage with that. You see what I did for each of the character guards? I had you engage with two things, so it's a couple points each. It should be fairly straightforward how you're being assessed there. Um, question three, we're on to Nietzsche. Um, uh, in Twilight of the Idols, in section two of the problem of Socrates, Nietzsche makes the following claim. One must, by all, uh, all means, stretch out one's, one's fingers and attempt to grasp this amazing finesse that the value of life cannot be estimated. He says, not by the living, because they're an interesting part, interested party, even a bone of contention, and not by the dead, for another reason. Um, so, um, effectively, right, um, he's very clear about this in this particular, particular section, about judgments, judgments about life, about the value of life, right, he calls them stupidities that have value only as symptoms. So I'm asking you to unpack that argument um, it, that actually establishes the sort of dispositional critique um, that Nietzsche is starting out in Twilight of the Idols. Right, um, because it's sort of a crazy thing that, like, it, like I say, four out of five, five dentists agree that's it, brushing with crest, blah blah blah. Right, it's like four out of five of the wise sages agree that. But what does that provide evidence for? What does it evince, as Nietzsche points out? Right, does it mean that they're right? He doesn't think so. It means that they had to agree. It's symptomatic. Right. Anyhow, um, that's uh, the, the, your question number three there. Then I turn to Roderick. Um, and because this is related uh, to what Nietzsche is um, it, it, it arguing in Twilight of the Idols, and I'll see if I can't um, see if I can't unpack this a little bit for you. Roderick, well, uh, discussing uh, the paradox of interpretation raised by Nietzsche claims, quote, quote, it's crucially important in the political economy of the university to try to deny Nietzsche's insight for this reason, if it is one. The reason is that it might be impossible to get to the right interpretation, right? Um, it, it, like, you know, it's but. Right. Roderick actually suggests a number of different kinds of ways to interpret. So this is related to um, judgments about life, because effectively judgments about life are interpretations of life, interpretations of the value of life. Right. So this suggests a whole different standard that we should hold interpretation to. Right. So um, four points for that. Um, I give you the annotated sort of version of uh, Roderick's video there, um, so you don't have to go back through and watch the whole thing, though it's, I think it would be valuable uh, for you to do so, especially if you didn't watch it the first time. Um, so um, that, that's it, basically that paradox of interpretation is what I'm asking you to um, unpack in terms of Twilight of the Idols there. And finally, Twilight of the Idols, in the section called Morality is Anti-Nature, Nietzsche presents a rather damning criticism of Christian morality, claiming that this form of morality turns hostily against the passions, or is an attempt to kill 
the passions. He uses the word castration um, at several points um, throughout this particular dialogue. Here the alternative that Nietzsche uh, uh, proposes is, quote, the spiritualization of the passions. That's 487 if you're portable, for which he gives two examples, love and hostility. Briefly discuss first how Nietzsche uses these passions as um, a triumph over uh, the prevailing form of morality. So I want you to discuss each, right, um, in uh, your, your your response, right? Now, um, basically what Nietzsche is um, it, it contrasting is a morality that says it should kill the passions, right? Kind of like a dentist plucks out teeth so it, they don't hurt anymore. He's suggesting something different, right, with regard to the passions, thinking them through, through refi refining them, harnessing them, directing them to some sort of beneficial end, right? So, um, it, basically what I want you to do is um, engage uh, with uh, a treatment of what Nietzsche means by healthy morality. He gives you a formula for I reduce principle to formula late on in morality is anti-nature. Um, that should be helpful in helping you uh, interpret this. Um, so uh, I look forward to uh, reading uh, all of your responses to all of this, though I'm going to have to do so at breakneck speed. Um, uh, it should be an interesting, it's, uh, these, these last assignments are the most interesting for me because in the first one, you're just kind of finding your feet. The last ones, um, you've got some sort of background of understanding, uh, your papers especially, because you are hopefully issuing a passionate argument about, you know, what you think is actually the case, right? So um, you're taking up a critical stance and um, it basically you're making this material yours, right? So um, I look forward to reading those final assignments. Um, and uh, more generally, thank you for the course. Right? It's been an interesting semester. Um, I've tried to make it interesting for you. Uh, I try to pick material that you know relates to your life and maybe help, might help you live your life. Um, but anyhow, um, that's what we're looking at. If you need anything, um, let me know and uh, we'll talk soon. Take care.